is being recorded per Governor Lamont's order, executive order 7.B. And the recording indicator is on, so we are recording. Uh, tonight, uh, we are at the Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission uh, public meeting. It is Wednesday, December 16th, 2020, approximately 7.39 p.m. Uh, we are having a virtual meeting tonight in accordance with the governor's executive order due to the ongoing pandemic. At this point in the meeting, we have a opportunity for public comment. Uh, given the uh, pandemic, we do our, uh, offer the opportunity for the public to reach out to, to staff for the meeting. So Derek, did anybody contact you? No, I did not receive any correspondence about it. Or calls. Okay. Does anybody here have public comment? Uh, seeing that there is none, we can move on to the public meeting portion of the meeting. Uh, so we have application number 727-20. It's 1199 Silas Dean Associates, 1199 Silas Dean Highway, parcel number 238-005. It's an application for minor site improvements within a regulated area. And with us tonight, uh, representing the application on do we have somebody, Derek? Uh, yes, hello. My name is Matthew Niski, professional engineer from Giuliano Associates, representing uh, Mr. Azuli with regards to his application. Um, I'm just going to go over uh, a little bit about the project first and explain what we're trying to do. I am going to attempt to share screen, so please bear with me um, if it's able to share or not. Um, if not, I do know the most revised sets of drawings were sent out um, rather late in the day due to me being a, submitting them fairly late. So let's see if we can share. Um, Derek, is there any way I can share my screen? Yep. Uh, give me a moment here. Yep. Sorry about this. There's a way I'm going to let you do that, right? And while we're waiting, if, if you guys are on mute and you want to uh, speak to talk, you can actually hold down your space bar and you hold that down and talk too. So that's as we learn more about the, the platform and technology. You should be able to share, Matt, because I'm there's nothing, I don't think there's anything restricting you from it. Hold, hold on, let me try this. All right, yeah, this will take care of it. Okay, so let's try it. Why don't you try it now? Otherwise I could bring it up for you. Nope, I got it to load. So we're gonna share Google Maps first. So I could give a quick view of the site. Um, this is the site as it stands today. It is currently a vacant building. Um, Santander Bank is right next to it. The property line goes between the two buildings. Um, I'll show a site plan with the property lines in a moment. Access to the site is off of Silestine Highway through a easement um, on Santander Bank's property. The parking lot as it stands, most of the pipe paint striping is fairly eroded. Um, you can see to the north here, Goff Brook flows through the site and there is some, we'll call it a drainage swale coming along the eastern side of the property here through flow um, underneath Silestine Highway. Um, I'm going to try to go to the site plan now for proposing. And I don't know how to do that. Um, so if with regards to the site plan, while I'm trying to fix this, I'll talk through it. Um, the wetlands as shown on the site plan are from the town's GIS, so the wetlands themselves, if you can see them, are um, within the, oh, I apologize now, I have all my AutoCAD windows open to explain this, and I have to show them one at a time. Um, this is the site plan here. As you can see, this is what the latest set of plans submitted will show. Um, the wetlands, as you can see here, come into the property from the town GIS. We were not able to get a soil scientist out there to investigate this. Um, we're showing them per the town GIS because that is the information we have. 
We are proposing no work within the northern side of the wetlands up here in these parking spaces other than to restripe the parking lines. The work to be done is over here in park, parking space 12. Um, in order to bring the parking spaces to requirement to regulations, we had to expand the parking space out. I believe it was about a foot and a half. Um, the number in front of is included in the um, application for the exact square footage of it. Oh, it's up top here, 122, 52 square feet. Excuse me, um, Matt? That, yes. Can, can anybody else see Matt's screen? Oh, sorry. Or is that I, just me? No, I can't either. No, I can't either. I was just going to ask. It's, sorry. It's just interrupt me if something's if, not working. <laughs> if it would help, I mean, would you want Derek to, to kind of display the PDF? If he can, then, yes, then you that can, would actually. You can tell him to flip the pages or zoom around or whatever, you know? Okay. Um, I'm going to just stop sharing then because I paused myself and can't unpause. Sorry about that. If that would help you out. All right. So what sheet do you want to see, Matt? If you can, I believe it would be sheet four in the PDF. It would be the site plan. Okay. Yeah. Get there. Okay. So let me share the screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, so on the plan that you can see here, this is the grading and utility plan, but this works fine with it. Um, the work to be done is in the northeastern side of the property. You can see there's some hatch there for some existing riprap. We are expanding into the existing riprap, so we're not it's not like it's an established wetlands. There's no wetland species that are growing there. It is just a riprap slope going down towards the brook. Um, we are expanding, like I said, 152 square feet. And most of that is for grading so that we don't have a sheer drop right off the um, proposed parking space. As it exists right now, storm drainage, there are two leak offs on site. One exists in that parking space that we're extending which we are proposing to leave up, create another leak off there. And then up by parking space 13, there's another leak off up there. Um, during construction, both areas will be outfitted with silt, scent, excuse me, silt fences and hay bales. Um, all catch basins which discharge into Gough Brook will have silt sacks to protect the water course as required. There is a little bit of work to be done within the FEMA 100-year floodplain. Um, as you can see, kind of in the middle of the screen where it says proposed grass area, that currently is asphalt. We are proposing to rip that out to put down grass. Um, and then in the middle of the site, there's pr two proposed rain gardens. Both of those areas currently are paved. We are removing the asphalt to put in some rain gardens. The rain gardens also help offset the increase in fill that we are proposing over by the parking space. Um, I did run the calculations and I just looked at the, the, the stone in the rain garden and the stone alone produces an extra 75 cubic feet of storage in case the golf brook would flood. So we did meet um, the regulations for that. Um, with regards to comments received from town staff, um, they did propose removing the curbs on those two inner islands, which we did. We did turn them into rain gardens. They will be landscaped. Um, their purpose is to help collect a little bit of sheet runoff, allow it to infiltrate. Um, when they fill up, it will then sheet flow across the parking lot and in, in, through the leak offs. Um, we did add the total disturbed site excuse me, wetland area, which was that 152 square feet. And again, this is just to extend the one parking space to allow the parking space to meet regulations. We are extending it into existing riprap. Again, there are no existing species in that area. Um, and I'm just gonna go through the comments from the staff here just to address them. To, that way you guys don't have to go through the plans. Um, if you do have the comments in front of you, if not, they were submitted with a letter to as part of the revision process here. Um, we did meet the town's MS4 um, permit as a result of those rain gardens because all the water that flows into them is disconnected from disconnected from the river. Um, it will allow extra water to infiltrate into the soil, um, thus helping the town meet its MS4 requirements. It is 
um, a fairly small amount. I think it was, um, and it is included on the plans, the exact number. Uh, I think it was 700 square feet, um, which is for a site this small where really we're only removing some asphalt, a uh, fairly sizable amount. Um, all landscaping has been called out. The landscaping in the rain gardens is water resist, water tolerant. Um, they do enjoy being in water. We have proposed them in other rain gardens and with obviously uh, routine maintenance, they do last quite a long time and they do look nice. The rain garden itself will only be recessed six inches. So the proposed use in the building right now is a daycare, a dance studio and a restaurant. So with the six inches, it really does not present a safety hazard should a little kid decide to go running in the parking lot, which is always a good thing. Um, as you can see on the site plan in front of you, we are proposing to surround a play area, which is to the west of the building with bollards pr protecting the children from any rogue cars. Um, we are not proposing to change the grade in that area. So while they are ripping up the asphalt, um, they are proposing to put down almost like a wood chip style surface. So the water will still sheet flow um, towards Golf Brook. This plan doesn't show it. Um, it would be, um, I don't know if you really wanna change sheets, Derek, but it, I believe it's the next sheet. We are proposing a stockpile in the middle of the parking lot, kind of like where the proposed rain garden next to an arrow is. Uh, there it is. Um, this is meant mostly just for the asphalt that they dig up. It is not proposed to be left on site for very long. Um, we are showing it and we will surround it with hay bales just in case you know, a, uh, they're waiting on a dump truck to come. They have a spot to put the asphalt while they continue to remove the asphalt that's shown. And I believe we have met all and answered all of the comments from town staff with regards to the site plan, um, property corner, uh, corners have been added, benchmarks have been added. Um, the proposed improvements on sheet three, which I think is one before this, have been called out. Um, if you would, can go there. Uh, this is sheet three, I believe, yes. So all the proposed improvements are shown. Um, again, with regards to what is being done in the 100-year floodplain, um, it is just those two rain gardens and the one little extension of the parking space. There is other work being done outside of it, but it is mostly replacing asphalt with another impervious surface, which we do not foresee any contamination sheet flowing into the river or brook, excuse me. Any questions? Did I talk too much? I apologize. Did you have a chance to go through Derek's uh, memo that he issued this evening, or have I, you seen that? I have not. Okay. Um, was that the one that you sent out about six, I think it was 611, Derek? Uh, no, actually, I, I did get a chance to review these plans and okay. I sent you a, a memo. Yeah, it was only 20 minutes before the meeting started. It was kind of a last minute thing. So okay. I did have some comments on uh, on this these plan set. Um, Nothing major other than I just I just need a little more information to understand how you're doing the uh, floodplain volume computations. I, okay. we this area here, just north of the building is a is a fill uh, in the floodplain if we're going up six inches. So I just, just need to make sure we're offsetting that. Okay. Um, like I said, I ran the comp the calculations just for the we are proposing 15 inches of crushed stone in the rain gardens, and I only looked at it within the horizontal area of the floodplain. So obviously the rain gardens are bigger. So any water that flows into the rain garden will fill up the whole rain garden. I only looked at it within the 100 year floodplain area and we did need it. Um, I can definitely talk with Derek as to if any comp, if there was any other issues with that and if we need to offset that by adding a little bit more crushed stone to those rain gardens.
Uh, and if it helps the commission with regards to the parking space that we are proposing extending, I believe the maximum amount of fill that we are adding in over there is three tenths, so just over three inches of fill. So it's not a lot. We just have to convert some of the riprap area into asphalt to make the spaces meet regulations. It sounds like there's enough flexibility for you to to actually balance the cut fills and you know satisfy the comment from Derek. Does anybody else have any other questions or? Yeah, yeah if you don't mind, uh, I just want to understand the one spot where they're going to impact the wetlands is by that parking space 12. Is that correct? Correct. That's um, it. And correct. basically, okay, basically at this time, that's all been disturbed previously. It's covered by riprap. So, you are correct. So, the, so the basically, hatch. Yeah, you're not really going to do much there. You, it's still basically improved. You're just changing it to asphalt, but you're somewhere else in the place you are extending the grass and the rain gardens and everything else to, to take up the slack. Is that about right? You are correct. Yes, we are showing a net decrease in impervious area on site, even by paving that little area over by parking space 12. So that, that really is not much of a change from where it's at right now. It's just kind of a difference in what it's covered with. Uh, I'm just wondering on Derek's uh, first review, uh, item number two, where he asked you consider removing the existing curb, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously you considered it. Um, you, you don't want to uh, do it basically because of cost. Is that, is that it? Uh, you are correct. It is cost. Um, we would have to remove all the curbing along that area and install curb stops along in each every, in every parking space. Okay. In terms of the cost of the overall site work, um, excluding the playground area, but within the site walk or site itself, that would is quite sizable compared to the rest of the work being done for okay. the parking lot. And you feel that that would disturb more area within the floodplain than the way you're going to do it right now? You are correct. Now, did you provide any computations to Derek on that or how you, how you came up with that? At computations with regard to the cut fill Literally, or with- that If you did it as he was asking you to consider that it would, uh, would disturb more area in the floodplain. I have not, um, it would, the only disturbance would be the removal of the curb along that area and then um, obviously installing the curb stops and, and with the hill right next to it, they would probably be bolted down. So you'd have, you'd be putting holes in the asphalt right along the wetlands. Yeah. In terms of disturbance, it's, it's minor. You're replacing a solid curb with a six foot curb every parking space. Is the, okay. the curbing presently backed up with, with stone or I, soil? I don't know off the top of my head right now. I believe it is just a floating, I call them a floating curb where there is no backfill behind it. I can verify that. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like from here. Okay. I do know a portion of it does have riprap directly around it. So even if there was no backfill, there are some large stones behind it that would help keep the curb in place should a car hit it. Okay. All right. So, so right now it's just a matter of the height of the curb that's, and that's going to be more costly. Is that basically the, the answer there? Uh, well, you have the cost to remove the existing curb, then right. you have the cost of the curb stops and then the in installation of them. Yeah. And it's not going to add much to what we got there. Okay. Uh, you haven't seen Derek's response to your response, correct? Um, I believe I submitted it too late in t today for Derek to have yeah. a chance to review it. Yeah, yeah. 
And I'm looking. I'm looking at. Well, this. I did. I did review it, Matt. I just like, like I was saying earlier. I just sent it to you. Maybe seven ten tonight. So I just didn't have a chance to see it yet. I don't know if you want to share. Do you have that memo handy, Derek? Yeah, I could bring it up. Just this, this in case you know, it's at a conditional approval, um, based on a, you know them addressing the comments based on the memo dated today. This way, uh, Matt has an opportunity to to see the comments and. Mm -hmm. Um, you should be able to see it on the screen. They're easy, easy enough to, to address. I think you have to change what screen you're sharing when you do that. I think it's locked on the PDF. I got you. Okay. Um, are they, I believe it was seven comments, Derek? Uh, let's see. Correct. And then there's Sorry, two, I, two P and Z comments. I do have uh, the that. I received it at six something. So sorry, I was a little confused on that. Yeah, it was right before seven, right? Um, you guys see it on the screen now? Yes. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. Um, I can address them if the commission would like as we go through them. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, with regards to the proposed uh, grading and bottom elevations for the rain gardens, that's easy enough to do. I do have a depth for them. So based on the surface elevation, I can provide a bottom elevation of those rain gardens. And then obviously that would result in the flood storage calculations for the gardens below the flood elevation of 29. I can't provide that. Um, off, I, at this time, I do not know the surface material for the play area as it was, is there, excuse me, is currently asphalt. Um, I believe any surface that a child can play on would be a better site covering than asphalt. Um, I don't know if they're going to do wood chips, um, rubber chips, uh, rubber mat. I don't know if the client is 100% certain on that either. So that would be a discussion for me to have with the client and the proposed tenant in the building to determine what they would like to do for the surface of that. Um, with regards to the relocation of the soil stockpile, the location of the stockpile was just arbitrary, just to show that there is area on site. I have no issues moving it, and I am sure the client would have no issues with a moving of the stockpile. Um, with regards to the drainage easement, um, me and Derek will have to talk with that. Um, I believe I have shown it. Um, we might be talking about two different drainage easements. The map I have shows just a small drainage easement. Um, I could be looking at the wrong map on that. So we will definitely look into that and show it on the plans. Um, with regards to the start and end dates, the client is, is expecting to start assuming approval from the Inland Wetlands and Planning and Zoning Commission mid-January, excuse me, mid-February based on pulling permits and he's expected to have everything done by mid-June. So not a long time for this building to turn around and open. Um, I apologize for the line work with that. Um, it's a plot style on our computer and I, it, I will darken up those lines so they are a lot easier to see. And the dumpster, I apologize for that. I moved it based on uh, turning radiuses for a truck. I was able to make the truck work and I had forgotten to update it on the rest of the plan. So with regards to the dumpster location, I, that is very easy to address. Um, the, if the commission wishes, I can go over the other two comments or I could discuss that with Derek at a later time. I mean, I mean, you could go over it if you'd like. Okay. Um, with regards to the handicapped parking space, we are doing proposing a small amount of grading over there. I believe the maximum we're removing is through just over three inches from the asphalt. Obviously, it will have to be repaved to meet the 2% maximum slope for the uh, accessible parking spaces. It's, it's only for the accessible parking spaces. I believe currently they are at 3%. So to bring it down to the 2% is a very small amount of grading. The concrete ramp um, is currently flush with the existing pavement. I will indicate that on the plans. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions for Matt?
No, we're good. Yeah, I'm uh, Okay, do we have a motion to approve the uh, the application? Yeah, I, uh, this is Lou. I motion to approve the application. Uh, one uh, question, do we want to do this conditionally? Uh, yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking. Uh, conditional based on addressing or incorporating revisions resulting from the comments from the December 16, 2020 memo from Derek Gregor. Okay, great. Um, I'll make a motion to approve application number 727-20-1199 Silestein Associates, 1199 Silestein Highway, parcel number 238-005, um, conditionally pending the agreement uh, to anything that the town engineer um, will end up uh, requesting. And then do we have a second on that motion? Yeah, I'll second it. I, I don't see a big impact on wetlands here. I think he's covered all the first memo. He covered a lot of bases and uh, it sounds like he can cover these other things. We've heard testimony. Most of the items he's verbally told us that he can do it. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll go along with that. I'll second it. Okay, so we'll put it to a vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And that passes. Thank you very much. Have a good You're night, welcome. everyone. You too. Hey, Matt. Um, just before we restart, uh, I know we had someone new uh, jump in with the last four digits of 3722. Um, is that you, Mary, or is that John that joined us? I didn't, I didn't catch what number. 3722? Oh, 0722 is me. That's you? Okay. No, no, wait a minute. Oh, let me figure this well, out. Mary, I got I have you. Are you in twice? No, I'm not. Okay. okay. So this this is the cell phone. So it's two zero three six two three eight four four five. Okay. Uh, if someone yeah. just joined recently with uh, eight six zero nine seven eight three seven. Oh, it must be it's maybe Sue to get audio. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Maybe it is Sue. Maybe she's on a computer to see the screen and then chat, and then she needs the phone for audio. Yeah, it's her. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. Okay, so moving along to our next application. It is application number 728-20, uh, JNS Enterprises Incorporated, 1785 Berlin Turnpike, parcel number 031-022. Application for slope improvements within a uh, regulated area. And with us tonight, uh, presenting for the applicant is? Uh, for the record, Kevin Johnson, uh, Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, Derek, if I could just share my screen, if I'd like to point to a few things. And then Kevin, were you able to receive Derek's uh, mem memorandum that he issued this evening at all? I did. Okay, good. I did. Um, so uh, th this property is located at 1785 uh, Berlin Turnpike. It's, it's along the southbound lanes. Um, Berlin Turnpike uh, is, is located to the right uh, on the site plan. Uh, direction north is to the top. Uh, the, the site currently uh, is a convenience uh, and, and uh, gasoline pumps. Uh, we've got the canopy with the pumps and then the building rectangular on the southern part of the site. Uh, there's uh, wetlands and a floodplain on this property. Uh, the wetlands are indicated uh, by that magenta color uh, to the west of the convenience store, uh, and that's from town mapping. Uh, the 100 year floodplain is the uh, heavy blue line, and that's indicated from FEMA map. Um, there is no uh, associated flood elevation with, with that line uh, in this area. Uh, there's also a uh, drainage easement. Uh, it, it's actually a, a state. Uh, DOT drainage easement that conducts stormwater. Uh, it's an 18-inch pipe that conducts stormwater from 
uh, Brown Turnpike and discharges to the wetlands. Um, th there's about uh, uh, an eight or nine foot difference in elevation between the parking area uh, west of the convenience store and, and the wetlands. Um, and it's, in, in a couple places, it, it's quite steep. Um, so just a little uh, ba background information, uh, you know, how, how this stabilization project all came about and why. Um, that, that slope that I just mentioned between the edge of the parking and the wetlands, that, that was heavily vegetated. Um, th the owner did undertake a project earlier this year to replace the gasoline, uh, the underground gasoline tanks. Um, part of that work, uh, the excavation uh, encroached into that slope. Obviously, when that happened, uh, vegetation was, was removed. Uh, the bulk of that was removed from the site. Uh, there was some uh, tree trunks and so forth that were stockpiled uh, on, on the embankment, uh, closer, I would say, to the north of the property line. Um, but the, the, in that area, the slope uh, was in places almost almost vertical, uh, and then it had this debris piled on top. Um, and, and just as a, a side note, um, while some of this activity, the, the, the tank replacement work was going on, uh, we had Tropical Storm Isaias, uh, which also blew over some trees, uh, which, which fell into the wetland areas. Um, those trees remain, and, and we've been instructed by the town engineer um, to, to leave those in place. But, um, so, as you will all recall, um, you know, we had a very dry summer when all this work activity was going on. Contractor was doing his work and so forth. Um, fall rains came. Um, most of, the, well, I'd, I'd say most of this site, probably from the, the, the canopy structure and, and, and the building itself, basically all the, the storm drain sheet flows. Uh, there's an existing catch basin uh, right at the edge of the parking on just west of the convenience store. Um, so everything sheet flows to, to that basin. And, and that is tied into that state drainage system and then to the wet discharges to the wetlands. Um, so when the fall rains came, uh, site wasn't paved yet, um, but storm drainage was still flowing towards that slope. Uh, the contractor who was working there at the time noticed uh, some sloughing of the slope, some settlement, some movement. They put these concrete blocks there trying to stabilize the top of that embankment. Um, it, it wasn't a solid barrier. There were joints between these, these blocks. They were blocks, you know, maybe three feet wide, four feet long, uh, you know, a couple feet high. Um, the next storm event came, water was going through the joints, caused some additional settlement uh, of, those, of those blocks and, and some slopping of soil. We were consulted um, by the owner uh, to develop a stabilization uh, methodology. Uh, we consulted with town engineer. Uh, we were proposing a geotextile fabric uh, to be towed in with riprap at the top and the bottom of the slope. Uh, instructed the site contractor to proceed accordingly, um, pretty much on an emergency basis to try and stabilize that slope uh, before winter. Um, the, the day the contractor decided to undertake that stabilization work, another storm event came. Uh, more movement was starting to happen. Uh, again, the contractor switched immediately, fearing that the gas, newly installed gasoline tanks would be undermined if that slope gave way. Uh, he immediately started placing riprap uh, on that slope. So that's, that's how we ended up with the riprap. Um, so about two thirds of that slope was done uh, beginning from the southerly area uh, around the edge of the, uh, the parking. Uh, but the work proceeding towards the north uh, to the abutting property, that, that was left in place. Um, various reasons, the, the owner had to contract with a, a second contractor 
uh, one to remove that tree debris and, and two uh, to, to do some regrading on that slope. Again, as I mentioned it in, in places it was almost vertical. Uh, the regrading of that slope, uh, the intent being to create a, a stable angle of repose to, to continue placing the riprap. Um, so as, as part of that regrading work, approximately 46 and a half cubic yards of soil were removed from the site. And in total, including contractor one and two, uh, 64 and a half cubic yards of riprap were brought onto the site. So there was a difference of, of about 18 cubic yards. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, the heavy blue line is the 100 year floodplain. Um, again, uh, you, you'll notice that it crosses the, through several contour lines. Uh, and again, there's no base flood elevation uh, for this portion of the site. And we, kn we know, um, you know, water just is not going to jump, you know, five, six feet there. Um, so it, it, it was hard to, without a base flood elevation, hard to determine if we actually had a, a loss of flood storage. Um, so you'll note in the, in the narrative back to the application, it mentions there, there may have been a loss of flood storage. Um, it was something that uh, we were going to discuss with the commission. Um, so subsequent to, uh, you know, the, the submission of the application, uh, town engineer issued review comments. Uh, one of the comments, or, or a couple that kind of go hand in hand, uh, one of the comments you, he wanted to see uh, pre-existing uh, contour elevations be before any work was undertaken. Uh, now we we weren't part of the gas station uh, renovation work, uh, so we we did not have surface elevations uh, be before any work commenced. Um, the engineering department provided uh, CJM with. Uh, town GIS mapping for pre-existing conditions. Um, and we actually ended up doing a uh, as-built field survey uh, of, of the existing conditions as of, uh, as of uh, yesterday. Um, again, to, to do volume calculations uh, be between pre-existing conditions and, and what currently exists on the site, uh, in, in consultation with uh, Mr. Greger, uh, he and I agreed that we would use the contour 212 elevation as the, pretty much the basis of an assumed elevation for the flood and, and a comparison elevation. And the reason we picked 212, if you notice towards the west a little bit, uh, the, the FEMA mapping is pretty much a straight line, but it, it pretty much is coincident with about the 212 contour. So that, that's why we selected the 212. So in comparing the two surfaces, um, it, it appears that there's a net fill uh, after all the riprap, riprap and regrading work of about seven and a half cubic yards in the 100 year floodplain. Um, so we, we acknowledge that. Um, there's a couple of ways we could, we could handle that. Um, the, the field survey also noted that, that there's an encroachment over the northerly property line of about five feet or so with some riprap. So um, in, in the spring, we'll, we'll have to address that, pull that back. So in conjunction with that work, um, one option could be we could do a little more excavation in that area, regrade and, and, and replace the riprap. Um, the, the other option that 18 inch uh, storm drainage pipe that I uh, mentioned uh, that conducts storm water from the Brown Turnpike to the wetlands. Basically, the outlet uh, at the head wall there, uh, that, that pipe, uh, our surveyors couldn't even get a flow line on that. That, that pipe is basically buried. Um, the, the structure, um, when you look inside, it's filled with water. We couldn't get a flow line on the pipe. So in discussions with town engineer, um, one other idea to compensate for the seven and a half cubic yards was to do some excavation at that head wall. 
uh, that excavation work would be uh, within a, within the wetlands area. Uh, I, I, I should mention um, that there is thought and discussion. Uh, the owner would like to expand parking. Um, we're still evaluating the feasibility of that, but we did have a soil scientist go out there um, to flag wetlands. Uh, so that magenta line, that's the town wetlands, is not accurate. Um, the real wetlands really follow the toe of the slope about that 208 contour. Um, but again, going back to the second option to compensate for the seven and a half cubic yards, uh, we could basically take that seven and a half cubic yards, create a scour hole at the outlet uh, of the head wall in that 18 inch pipe and, and hopefully try and, and get some flow going from that 18 inch uh, drainage pipe. Um, there, there would be obviously a disturbance to the wetlands uh, to create that scour hole. Um, but so there, there are a couple options there, um, but right now, um, we're, we're indicating to do that work for the scholar hole. Um, so I think uh, we've been working very closely with uh, town engineer. Um, I think we've satisfied uh, most of his comments. Uh, I am in receipt of uh, the memo from uh, earlier this evening. Um, have no problems with that. Um, the first one was to add a note um, regarding the 212 contour elevation, um, that it's the assumed elevation for comparison of, of the flood. So we'll add that to the plans. Uh, the second comment uh, was to revise uh, the, the scour hole uh, and uh, you know provide more some dimensions on that. So at this point, um, that concludes my comments and be happy to try and answer any questions. Uh, just a question. Um, do I understand it? If you want to correct the impact on the floodplain, what you're proposing to do is actually going to impact on the wetlands. You're going to have to go into the wetlands and disturb those to correct that other problem. That, that's one option, correct? That's one. Right. But it would also, I mean, right now, uh, when you go out there, there's just standing water in the wetlands there. Um, and and we, the, the, the outlet pipe is buried. Um, so that storm drainage really does not flow. I mean, I, Derek will tell you, or Mr. Gregor will tell you, I, I'm not an engineer, but it's dangerous to know that probably the only way that pipe functions, um, you know, is probably, uh, you know, the water by hydraulic gets pushed out in a storm event. Um, other, otherwise, it's just sitting in the pipe, the basin, uh, you know, the hydraulic head is the only thing that pushes it through. Um, but yes, to answer your question, we would be disturbing wetlands to create a scour hole. Okay, no, but, no, but, but a twofold purpose, trying to compensate for the seven and a half cubic yards and also to get some water. So based on the elevations, would that restore the pipe to, to flow by gravity and, mm. and, you know, kind of back to its existing in, you know, way it was designed? I, I don't know fully. Um, when we're proposing to excavate um, down about 1.8 feet, um, uh, I, I think it would certainly help, um, but I don't think it would solve it totally. Okay. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the, 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 the pipe is completely buried that our surveyors couldn't even get a flow line on. Uh, yeah. And, and in the basin itself, uh, they dropped the survey rod down. They were able to get the bottom of the stump in the basin, um, but they could not get the elevation of the pipe. Um, and, and we can only assume that it's an 18 inch pipe that continues from the basin to the wetlands. We, we so, so over the years that silted up. 
yeah, I mean that that's been installed since Burlington Turnpike was built. Whenever in the 30s and or whenever it was, um, I, I seriously doubt again if it's if it's a state DOT right of way. I, I seriously doubt they've ever done any maintenance. Uh, yeah. So it almost looked looked to be like a maintenance type activity to to stabilize that outfall putting in the yeah. scour hole. Yeah, is, I mean, is the state involved at all in this issue? Uh, we have not been in contact with the state. I mean, I mean, if you start working on this and doing something about it, the state have the right to come in and say, hey, we don't want you to do that, or we want you to do it somehow differently, or? Well, they, they have a drainage easement. Um, yeah. so the work that we would be doing is slightly beyond their easement. Okay. But, I, my opinion is they would probably welcome it because they're not doing the maintenance. <laughs> okay. What was your other proposal to solve this problem? Well, the, the other option, um, again, uh, you know, we may be able to scrape, uh, re recontour a little bit, the, the slope um, at, at, as it approaches the northerly property, the abutting property to the north. Um, but again, that, that slope was just regraded. It's about a one and a half to one slope now. Um, I, I, again, that, that slope is stable now. Um, we do have to pull back some of the riprap that went over that northerly property line. But again, that's just a surface treatment to pull it back. Um, but again, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, uh, the owner of the property would like at some point um, to to, to, to try and get more parking on this site. And, and it's a challenging site. Uh, we've been evaluating different alternatives. Um, so, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the areas we're looking to add parking is uh, in, in that northerly parking. Um, if we were to pull the slope back farther, we may not have enough room to, to add a few more spaces. So, uh, but, but that is one option. Uh, and okay. to look at that toe of the slope around that 212 contour elevation in that portion of the site. But okay, if so that, then, then the drainage system is still going to remain as is. Okay, yeah. So you'd you just be redoing what you've already just done with the riprap and everything. So it wouldn't solve the... Wouldn't it wouldn't solve, solve the drainage power. pipe. Yeah. Or, it, it, or I wouldn't say solve, but it, it wouldn't help improve the drainage yeah. pipe. Yeah, it looks like the application here is proposing the, the scour hole. Correct, Kevin? This is correct. This is our latest plan that we actually okay. have still performed revisions to today in, in conjunction uh, with working with Mr. Gregor during the day. And then the scour hole will allow any future accumulated sediment from that drainage system to be cleaned out. Right. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the sediment happened, obviously, in the days when heavy uses of sand occurred during winter months. And I think a lot of it just got flushed through that drainage system and over the years has just accumulated in that wetland area. Yeah, when they were using sand and, and salt mixed together. Right. How much of an impact would there be on the wetlands if you were to do what you're proposing here with the scour hole? Uh, square footage wise? Yeah, any idea? Um, I, I think it was about 14 feet long from the head wall and about 13 feet wide. That's good. So maybe 160, 170 square feet or so. I was even looking up the maintenance aspect of the regulations. They're saying within 15 feet of the end of a pipe is considered maintenance. Hmm. The definitions. Yeah, but if you clean it, if you clean it out though and everything, now you've got the everything flowing through it. Where's it going? I guess that that's still the, the issue. Yeah, and then the soil is exposed as well. Yeah. You just clean that area out and not put back any sort of 
stabilization measure. Well, again, we would be putting riprap in that scour hole. Yeah. And Derek, you, you've had an opportunity to look at this and. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, to your, to your questions, it, it's still the, the ground elevation further west of the L is still high just from the sedimentation over the years. So it would take more impact, to get this to drain out. They would have to chase it maybe even beyond the property line to actually get that to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so. You know, we had discussed this at the last meeting. Um, you know, I, there's no great solution to it. I think that, you know, generally speaking, the slope that has been rebuilt and is stabilized now is pretty close to what was there. Um, you know, we're looking at some GIS topography for what was pre-construction conditions, which are, you know, proximate. They're not very accurate. And uh, they do have a good survey uh, that was just done on what's out there now. So. You know, I think generally it's pretty close to what was there. Um, I think doing the scour hole, um, you know, typically, in my opinion, I would be more concerned about making sure we meet the flood storage capacity requirement over some impact to what's considered a wetland area, but not very pristine wetland area that exists currently now. Um, so we had been talking and, you know, my thought was I would I was recommending that they put in a scour hole and provide the volume and that has a second purpose has been discussed to, to provide it uh, some some scour protection at the outlet, albeit it's not going to drain very well, um, but it does. It is the way it should be built um, anyway and it serves a couple purposes. Yeah. Well, I mean it's going to it's going to flow into that spot anyways that's where the pipe goes. Uh, I, I guess perhaps my only question it looks like. Maybe the best solution is, you know, unfortunately to impact the wetlands, but is there some way to mitigate that in some fashion, um, you know, to sort of offset it so that we can justify it? Uh, you know, I mean, one, one option, he mentioned that there's a number of trees. I think I had provided you with a letter I sent November 25th, has some photos. You can see some of those trees overturned that are just west of where the scour hole is and beyond where the silt fence is right now. You know, mm. right now that's just turned up soil and maybe mm. having them take out some of those trees as part of this and, and clean up the area and make it a better functioning wetland might be a way of it. It's within the existing wetland area now, but yeah. it's not really functioning that way right now. So they could they could make it function that way as, as a kind of- yeah, a, I, a, I think a, we have done that on a prior uh, plan, as I recall, uh, out on the west side of town. Um, one of those developments out there. I think that was one of the things where they were doing something to make the wetlands function better. Is that, I, I guess the question is to Mr. Johnson, whether that would be acceptable. Yeah, I, I think one of the things I also discussed with Mr. Greger was once those siltation controls, and I should have mentioned um, that silt fencing and, and hay bale dams have also been added at the toe of the slopes there, and they do pass through the wetland area there. Mm -hmm. uh, when they are removed, one one thing I did mention was perhaps we could do conservation seeding through that area, conservation mix uh, to help stabilize that area. Uh, you know, perhaps do some, you know, a, a, a few native plantings, uh, you know, shrubbery to, to help reestablish some vegetation there. Again, somewhat to compensate for some of the wind thrown trees from tropical storm east side here. So yeah. Again, again I, I uh, perhaps the owner would like to comment. I know he's part here, um, but I, I think we could do some seeding and and, and some na native plantings. Uh, do you do you think you need an opportunity to develop something like that? Uh, uh, a fuller plan along those lines? Uh, I, I could just, you know, put a seed mix on the plan uh, and, and a couple species, sizes and so forth. With a notation for that to be uh, carried forth when the erosion controls are removed. And certainly we wouldn't be doing any of that 
you know, scour work now uh, in the winter. We'd probably wait till the spring. That's right. Yeah, and actually, Brett, I, I, in the meeting packet, I called up um, the photo that Derek took. Yeah. It looks like the scour hole will be within what is presently disturbed now, you know, because it doesn't go past the sill fence. And then beyond it does does appear that there's opportunities to, to actually put in the the uh, seed mix that that Kevin's talking about. Yeah. yeah there's a down tree that that's uprooted, but if that's cleared out, then that'll oppor afford an opportunity for some plantings. Could clean it up some. And, and when those trees went down, it opened up a lot of tree canopy, so it'll get considerably more sunlight now. So. Well, you know, I mean, to my view, I mean, if you got to do this thing with the scour hole, which it sounds like that's the way it's it's going to go, um, you know, it's going to impact the wetlands, then, you know, even what it is, we need to have some mitigation. So uh, I, I guess with that is sort of my general thoughts on it. Um, I, I guess the question is, uh, do we know enough to be able to say something about this plan today or should we wait? maybe till the next meeting to see what exactly they come up with. Just my opinion, I don't yeah, know no, here, you know. <laughs> I think it makes sense to, to, to actually have them identify an area that would, would be restored with a, like a New England wet mix or, or some sort of appropriate, uh, you know, wetland restoration mix. Well, I, I yeah. think I think that's what I would use. Um, that's typically uh, from New England wetland plants from Amherst Mass. Is, is yep. there is there wet mix? Um, and, and I think the area would be identified probably as that limit from the scour hole westward to you know about where that magenta line is. That's the, that's basically the boundary of wetlands indicated by town map. You know, it, it would be in that area there and, and then do some uh, native plantings, you know, perhaps some viburnums, you know, probably more over on the edge, uh, not, not versus right in the middle. Uh, go with slope in that area. So basically a trapezoidal shaped area. Right, from, from about where the silt fence and the scour hole will be uh, to about where that magenta line is at, at, at the toe of the slope, from, from toe to toe. Can you visualize that, Brent, or does um, Kevin... I'm looking at, yeah, and I can see the magenta line in the, as far as I go, don't, don't know where this, this stuff is falling down or whatever, but. Yeah, it's. Can it's, you zoom in, Kevin? Can you mark on the plan? Yeah. It's on the screen? I mean. Into it right now the area. Deep. So that, that looks like it's about as twice as big as the scour hole. Oh, it, no, I think it's, yeah, I, I think it's at least twice as big, if not more, from toe to toe. So you would remove the down trees in that area or the, up, the big yeah. uprooted tree? There, there's at least two substantial wind thrown trees in that area. And then uh, restore the area with um, that and seed that area. Wetland and, seeding. And, and again, do some native plantings, uh, you know, some viburnums, uh, you know, maybe some red twig dogwood, things of that sort that'll provide some habitat and, and forage for, for any wildlife. You know, that, that, that sounds fine with me. I guess the only question is, do we want to uh, plan with that those conditions, uh, Derek's input, or would we want to table the motion, table it until next meeting to see them come forward with, you know, their complete plan? So that's only it. How, how firmly do we want it in place, basically? Kevin, when was your start date for this? For the remediation? For the, for the scour hole, 
Uh, yeah, for the project. Yeah. Probably not until spring. I, I, I don't think I would want to open this up now at this time. Okay, so we do have time if we table it. That's the way it seems. So what do you think, Lou? Would does that make sense to have him come back with a, you know, plan that's yeah, marked I mean, up with the, the plant things and? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I it, think it doesn't sound like it's of the yeah. essence that we've got to get this, uh, you know, done right now. Correct. Kevin, would you be good with that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that the, the the area that he's talking about looks looks fine to me, and that that does generally meet the. What we're supposed to be doing here so you know yeah. I, I guess it would be nice as long as there's time to see it and not you know not to do a conditional if we can we can get a full plan and every derek everything's stable out there right now right uh, uh yes uh the slope is stabilized with the riprap um and then any disturbed areas below that are stabilized with the still fence and hay bills okay would there be any urgency about the fact that the, the pipe has some issues uh, sediment in it or anything, or is that that's okay as far as we're concerned? Yeah, I think so. I mean, without getting into real extensive work into the wetlands, yeah. you know, it is okay. what it is right now, and I think this would be an improvement to what it is currently. Generally, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like we'll we'll what table the application till next month. Is that where we're leaning, and then have Kevin come up with a a um, a plan to to enhance the the wetland downstream of the scour hole. You're on mute, Brent. Yeah, I would make that motion. <laughs> okay. Um, did you want to make the motion? Uh, sure, I can do that. I, I move that we table application number 728-20, Janus and Enterprises, Inc., 1785 Berlin Turnpike, parcel number 031-022 until the next meeting. I'll second that. Okay, so put it to a vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? No one's opposed. So we'll see you in January. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. You happy too. Happy holidays. Good night. Night. Yeah. Happy holidays happy to holiday. you guys. See, see you next Thank year. You. Okay. Bye. Right. I didn't catch who was the second on that. Well, so I think it was Lou. Yeah, it was me. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the Conservation Commission uh, business portion of the meeting. Oh, Mohammed, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. Okay. So he's got it. So Derek, do you have an update on the, the database? Yeah, I, I, I know last time we talked, you had asked me to look into that a little bit more. So um, as I understand it, we were we've done some of the work um, to get town properties, conservation land, conservation easements um, cataloged and into the GIS. Although at this point, I don't, my understanding is that process hasn't been finished yet. Um, okay. So right now I am in the process of um, trying to hire a couple of positions and then mentioned it before. One of them is going to be a construction manager who's also going to serve as the inland wetlands agent. So that is a project that um, I can have them resume once we get them on board and up to speed okay yeah just in case we're asked to produce a report for town council um i'm not sure if there's any opportunities out there for purchasing open space but okay so moving on to the general business portion of the meeting uh i don't think john joined us so procedurally, I don't think we have a quorum to approve the minutes. Is that how it appears? 
Yeah, it appears we have four uh, of the six members that were present that night. So we can um, we could table that to the next meeting. Uh, do we need to put that to a vote? I haven't really encountered this. What do you think, Brent? I don't recall us ever doing that. We just yeah, I don't know. People I don't, that was it. Just pushed it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's push it off. And then moving on to item number two in general business, we have staff update regarding the status of dock encroachments at the 1860 Reservoir. So if you give an update on that, Derek. Yeah, I, uh, I did speak with the town manager um, that is currently, it's still in the town attorney's office. Um, we recently have been transitioning town attorneys, so um, I don't think they've moved too much on it, but I know, um, you know, the manager is aware of it. We've We've heard about it from different residents, so it is something they're pursuing at this time. I just don't have a lot to offer um, okay. as far as what where that is, other than that, at this time. And then has that? Oh no, that's further on down the line. Okay, so that's the update there. So their new town attorney is going to be taking over, and that's on their to-do list. Yeah, I, and I don't know how much was done with the prior attorney, if this is one of the things he's going to close out or not. I, I'm not clear on that, but I, I know there it is in the works. Um, and it is something that's being discussed. So uh -huh. I suspect eventually those conversations will come back to town council for um, some direction as to how, how best to proceed. Sounds good. And then moving on to the correspondence uh, portion of the meeting, we have 1785 Berlin Turnpike, its permit requirements for wetlands and floodplain violation from Derek Geiger, town engineer, interim wetland agent dated November 25th, 2020. So again, that's the letter that uh, the applicant, that prompted the applicant, applicant to come in tonight, correct? That's correct. This was based on our discussion at the last meeting. Uh, and then we also have, oh, sorry, to cut yep. you off. Uh, we also have 123 Robeth Lane. Again, that's the the um, permit determination and dock removal letter. Uh, do we have Do we have an update on that? Did they they pull that out of there? Or I know the deadline specified is coming up. Yeah, I did speak to the owner uh, maybe about a week ago, and um, at the time the the water was frozen, um, so. You know, he asked if he, we can give him a little leniency to when the water, you know, thaws out and uh, it's easier to get into, you will take it out. So, I mean, understanding it's winter, I told him that was fine, particularly, with, you know, with this weather we have coming in now, it's not really usable anyway. So I think once weather warms up and things clear out, at least I can circle back with him. So I told okay. him I wasn't going to be very firm on the December 20th date, but we'll, we'll get it taken Just care keep, of. Keep it on your radar screen. And then uh, finally, we have the 648 Russell Road. Uh, there's a cease and desist uh, regarding land disturbance. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we. Um, I was notified um, by some other town staff that there was some clearing operations going on. on Russell Road, this is a couple properties south of Arrow Road. And uh, it's looking at it, it stopped out at the site it looks like the disturbance exceeded the half acre threshold, um, probably closer to one and a half acres of disturbance. So I had sent this out. Um, it was hand delivered to the contractor working on site. The property owner did call me back, um, apologized. He claims he wasn't aware that he would need to come in for a permit. He did stop in from what I understand to talk to some engineering staff and there might've been some miscommunication regarding he was questioning, or my staff believed he was questioning permits for work in the right of way, which he was not doing. They said that he didn't need it, um, but he did admit he didn't. He wasn't very clear with staff as to how much clearing he was planning to do, um, so they weren't aware it was this much of a project. So basically, when we spoke, he asked if he could remove the stumps that had already been excavated and stockpiled on site, um, which I said was fine, and I directed him to install silt fence below all the disturbed areas, um, which he has done. Uh, so his intention is he's he has a surveyor. Uh, I think they already did some of the field surveys. So he's 
working towards getting an application into us uh, at the next meeting in January. And um, I had corresponded with him via email, I think it was maybe just yesterday, um, indicating that, you know, as at this point, we've inspected it, he's done that work where we cannot utilize the site for parking or any more site improvements um, until such time that he comes in and gets the appropriate approvals. So he has been in touch with planning department. Um, sounds like he's gonna have to come to them for his long-term plans. Uh, one of the issues out there that had already been installed, they put in like a 30 by 40 foot paved pad. Um, from what I heard from the planning director, he had indicated that he was planning to park vehicles there. Um, some company was gonna be parking this as a satellite location. Um, which won't be allowed until he goes through planning and zoning approval. Um, so I had told him, you know, whatever plans come in, he's got to show the work that's been done to date, and then we'll figure out how we're going to address it. Okay. And then procedurally, I know there's the flexibility for an ENS certification um, for an applicant in town to either go before us or to planning and zoning. I just haven't... Um, been paying attention to if PNZ adopted that portion of their regulations that allows them to approve the ENS? They did. And I talked to the planning director about, you know, how we felt it was best for them to proceed. So since, since they don't have a real development plan and don't expect to have one for some period of time, uh, we, th we thought it made sense for them to come to Inland Wetlands uh, Commission for the uh, erosion control certification if they were at a stage where they're ready to submit development plans, then we may have just had them handle the erosion control as part of the planning and zoning permit approval. But okay. since they're not at that level yet, we thought it made sense to have them come back for this. Okay, and then the the site is stable at this point in time as far as erosion and whatever they've, they've done for some, grubbing? Yeah, they're, they've stopped work, they've, stabilize what they can. I mean, obviously we're not gonna get anything to grow. There's some um, stone put in certain areas out there and they've uh, you know, surrounded the site with silt fence and wood chips backed up with wood chips. So okay. at this point, I think they're okay. And then we'll see what they come in with and what they're looking to do. He was apologetic. You know, like I said, he's explained that he wants to do everything right. So he, seem to accommodate the, you know, the direction to stop work and do what, what I mentioned earlier. And he did that within a few days, like he said he would. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions on that? Nope. I think that's it. Uh, I was gonna say I did follow up with some correspondence uh, the other day that I wanted to item, uh, add as a item 3D, which was uh, just some correspondence we received from DEP just to make you aware of it related oh, yeah. to the Putnam Bridge Trail. So that um, was sent out to you a couple of days ago. That's basically just them notifying us that DOT has obtained a, what they're calling a license from DEP um, to proceed with the project and kind of outlines the requirements for them as they go through the through the work. Okay, so the, the connections are permitted. So the Putnam Bridge. Yeah, to give you an update. Trail. Yeah, to give you an update on that, we're, uh, we've been in discussions with Glastonbury and DOT regarding maintenance of the bridge. Um, as you're aware, there's a trail that goes over the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I gather, seven years ago or so when they were doing public information meetings for this project, it was the intent that DOT was going to clear that trail and that this, this trail system was gonna remain open all winter. Um, it sounds like with uh, current funding situations and their resources, DOT doesn't feel that they're gonna be able to clear the bridge. So they were requesting that the town of Glastonbury and, and the town of Weathersfield work together to clear it. Um, the problem being it's a, it's a fiberglass deck. It's very narrow. I think it's six feet wide. Um, obviously, when they're plowing over the bridge, they're piling snow onto the trail. And it's just both towns just feel like it's beyond what we're going to be able to do, both from a manpower and a time perspective and a cost perspective. We don't have the right equipment for it. So we're in discussions with DOT now to see if uh, maybe, the, maybe the solution is going to be 
having it closed during the winter or having it closed when it's snow covered. Um, those discussions are still going on. So uh, my understanding is they're ready to go out to bid and they want to start construction in the spring, um, but they need the towns both to sign the project authorization letters um, agreeing on what the maintenance responsibilities are going to be before they can do that. And uh, we're still in that process. Okay. A question, will this hook up with the Goodwin College Trail there along the river? Uh, yes, it will. It will, because that's a that's a very nice trail. You get to see the, the other part of Wethersfield across the river there. Yeah, it, it will actually yeah. have pedestrian access to Wethersfield East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do have... Uh, we do have an upcoming project with lots of funding uh, to run some sidewalk and new striping along the road from uh, Hart Street down to where the trail will connect to the Great Meadow Road underneath the bridge. So we can tie into DOT's project. That was a phase one. Uh, we have a phase two project plan that would take the sidewalk further south and west from Hart Street and bring it to the existing cemetery where the sidewalk terminates. So we'd have a pedestrian connection right from Old Weathersfield um, all the way to the bridge. It's good. Hey, can I say one thing? If you don't mind, besides Merry Christmas, Derek, I just want to say that uh, I, I rely on the memos that you prepare with all the comments and everything. I really do. And I, I do appreciate it. I know it's hard and uh, time wise, it's it's tough to get them all cranked out in time, but, but I, I do appreciate them. I, I think they're very good. I, I just personally want to thank you for, for doing what you're doing there. I appreciate you saying that. I, uh, you know, like I like, I hate sending things out to you 20 minutes before we have a meeting, but, um, you know, I know these things can get complicated and if we can simplify it, you know, I'd rather try and get you what I can. So I do do it when I can. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, time is, is tough right now where I'm, my normal staff is five and we're down to two. So yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping to restaff soon and then things will get back to a little bit more normal for our operation. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that they're thorough and you're definitely consistent with your comments too, which is nice. So that, you know, our repeat customers, you know, definitely know what the expectation is, which is good. It's predictable. Stop me from having to comment on the same comments, but yeah, that's, that's the whole. Yeah, it's good having a predictable process. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I can recall when I came in that uh, sometimes plans coming in to some places, you know, they were missing a lot of stuff. And I, I think they have improved quite a bit lately. Yep. Yeah, I, I know uh, with the zoning regulation it was recently revised to include some um, checklists for their applications to make them more complete. Typically, these mm -hmm. are a little less complex. So it seems like we're doing fine without them. But um, you know, that's something we're trying to move towards is getting people to understand up front what's required. And part of the changes we made in the regulations recently for Inland Wetlands will, you know, help give them some guidance too as to what we're going to be looking for as far as LID and stormwater treatment, things of that nature. Now, not to prolong the meeting, but did, did you want to talk at all about the, the regulations at all, Derek? Oh, the what I had sent you? Yeah, I could, right. I could just mention it. Um, so I, I sent the chairman, uh, I just, I got a chance to look at the regs that you recently adopted, which are, look great. And I'm glad we got that done. I had asked Don to get that done before he left. I just had uh, some, some looking at, there were some formatting issues. Uh, some of it's just physically where things line up on the pages. But uh, other than that, the table of contents was a little bit off as far as the page numbers that were referenced where the actual section falls. So I was proposing to make some changes to that. And I wanted to make some minor changes to some of the applications to um, add a little bit of different additional information that I think would be useful for the commission and for myself when doing reviews, email contact and um, making it clear what property address is versus business or home address, some things like that. I had, uh, I had thought, I, had, I, I meant to have an opportunity to look at it before it was finalized. and. Things happened a little quicker than I thought, so I didn't get a chance to see them. So based on that, we had a discussion. Uh, we weren't clear on what the requirement is. I know there's a process you all just went through to amend the regulations. I don't know what this will entail. So I have uh, I reached out to the town manager and I was gonna touch base with the town attorney and see if we can get some feedback on if this is something we can uh, 
that requires a public hearing or if it's something that can be approved um, just by the commissioner itself without needing that in DEP notifications and such. So uh, hopefully I'll get more information before the next meeting. And if I can, um, we'll get you something to take a look at before that. Otherwise, you know, nothing's that critical. It's just, I wanna, I'd like to clean some things up um, since we just went through all that work just to finish it off. I think that's it. Does anybody have anything else or? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. And a second. Second. This is Clark. It's all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And happy holidays, everyone. Happy yes. holidays, guys. Merry Thank Christmas. you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Be See you next safe. year. All right, we'll everyone. do. Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night.